Okay, I'm going to cry now. Uh, well, Jesus, thanks. Uh, there's, uh, there's nothing uh, that I can say to you people that uh, you don't already have in your hearts. You're, uh, this is a great group. This is a great conference. I had no idea what it was when Kirsten, who books my speaking engagements, uh, told me I was coming here. Uh, you know, a bunch of farmers, what, what do they want with earthships? But, uh, well, see, I just came a few weeks ago. I came from Copenhagen. I went to the Copenhagen uh, conference. And uh, from a bunch of, you know, rhetoric spewing uh, stuff shirt idiots, really. <laughs> that are doing nothing to something like this that I hadn't even heard about. And uh, you got, this is, PASA's got it all over. This conference has got it all over the Copenhagen talks. <laughs> by far. Uh, it's, uh, there's, there's by far more going on here. Like, uh, uh, I, I was here for five minutes and got more, you know, uh, than I got in five days in Copenhagen. Uh, first thing I saw was food and kids, you know. There, there weren't no kids in uh, Copenhagen. There were some children, for sure. But, uh, there were no kids. And uh, that's how you can tell, you know, uh, uh, food, we can't live without food, and, and children are the future, so that's how you can tell if there's really something going on. And, uh, but then hearing these people speak and seeing what you all are doing, uh, it definitely dovetails into everything we're doing. Uh, it's just like everything else I do. I've been, I, did, I have been all over the world, uh, you know, from seeing dead bodies in shallow wells in the Andaman Islands after the tsunami, to seeing dead bodies uh, sitting behind desks in the legislature in, uh, in New Mexico. Uh, I've seen them everywhere, but the the uh, the thing is, no matter where I go, uh, I'm learning. I mean, people are paying me to go there usually, or in in the, in the, those two cases, I wasn't paid for sure. But uh, to to teach or talk about what I have learned, but I learn everywhere. I've already learned stuff here, you know, that I'm going to steal as quick as I can. <laughs> and uh, so, I mean, it's like everywhere I go, I'm learning more than I'm giving, believe me. Uh, so, and I got like, uh, you know, I hear all the, uh, the talk here about already about uh, Monsanto and uh, corporations and, uh, and the government. And uh, in their defense, uh, they, have, they have learned from natural processes. I mean, I, I remember uh, on my grandmother's farm a uh, big tray of water for the chickens, and there's a chicken standing in the water drinking and pooping in the same water. I mean, that's where these corporations and the government have learned from, from natural things. <laughs> I mean, so they're trying. Uh, so, you know, they're just not quite able to put it together. Uh, they, uh, there's a lot of material in what you guys have already said here. I can make a, you know, I can just build on your all's uh, stuff. The, uh, the dean with the, uh, the conversation about the, uh, everybody raised their hand who's uh, involved in agricultural things today, and only seven raised their hands, and uh, of course the other out of 30 people didn't raise their hands because they forgot that they ate, I guess. But I think I, I agree with them because other than here, what people are eating has nothing to do with agriculture <laughs> at all. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not only plastic, but it's uh, shipped from Taiwan. I mean, what we eat, you know. So, like, I, I have this thing I, I do a lot. We, uh, we're, uh, I don't have many pictures here, but we're, uh, we're getting really into food. And I guess that's why I'm here. Uh, synchronicity or whatever, but uh, uh, 
so we grow bananas. You know, we, we grow bananas from the sewage in the living room at 7,000 feet in New Mexico, foot of snow outside and bananas in the living room. And, you know, I just ate one the other day, you know. Uh, I, I go to the buildings on the place where he came to uh, visit. Uh, I go around to the buildings that are being built and I just graze, you know, usually. Uh, uh, but our banana from the living room in an in a earthship in, at 7,000 feet in the mountains of New Mexico is, I guess, what you'd call a carbon zero banana because there's no shipping, no freight. You know, you pick it out of your living room, you eat it, you know, there it comes to your living room, uh, you know, mysteriously. Uh, whereas the banana that you get at the store, and again, maybe the stores aren't the same here with a bunch of people like this in this state doing this, but. <laughs> Where, where I come from, you go to get this hard, yellowy sort of thing from a store. You have to peel it with a with a uh, sawzall or something, <laughs> and uh, and it came from you know Ecuador or whatever. It's got the carbon footprint of a of a tank, you know. Uh, so I mean, I'm always comparing a uh, the carbon footprint of a, a banana grown in your own home to the carbon footprint of a banana grown in a store. Uh, grown in a store, uh, purchased or delivered to a store. Uh, and so that's why I produce food. That's why food has become a big part of, of what we're putting together in, a, in what we call a sustainable green carbon zero home. I don't know which word to use. I use them all. But I agree that the word sustainable, you know, it's like, it's like peace and love in the 60s and 70s. It's uh, organic, is on every, you know, bottle of plastic, whatever. Uh, <laughs> That the words get overused, they get stolen. But there is one word that I'm starting to, it's not that pretty of a word or anything, but it, you know, the Vulcans, uh, uh, what is it, uh, live long and prosper type people. Uh, logic, you know, is it logical? That's the thing. I mean, is it, you can't really argue with that. Monsanto can't steal that and misuse it because logic has got a definition. Is it logical to do what we're doing or to do what is being done? Uh, so I think our housing, or what we're doing, what I'm about doing, is probably the best word that describes it, it is logic. Uh, and yeah, maybe they can figure out a way to misuse it. They probably will. But like, uh, so it's, we're, we're learning how to do it on a, an individual level, not because I think it's the only way. I don't think anything is the only way. Uh, uh, there's, I, I have a way that I'm used to but I'm certainly not going to say it's the only way. The, the way that we are uh, pursuing, though, uh, it's almost like a, you know how in the medieval times they had a, a big uh, uh, map, a 3D map out and all the knights and kings were standing around it figuring out what they were going to do and they're going to attack from the east and then from the west and surprise them from the north or whatever. Well, I, there are many ways and one of the ways that I think we can attack the situation, and it is a war, basically, that's going on here, is uh, individuals being empowered to not stand up and fight the government. I did that, you know. I'm like, uh, I'm like destroyed from uh, that uh, feudal fight, but it gave me some kind of a strength to know that uh, what, I, what I gained out of it was to realize that it was worthless. You don't fight them. You well, to put it bluntly, uh, <laughs> crawl up their asshole and attack them from the inside. <laughs> uh, and that's, you know, that's the best graphic I can come up with. I mean, I'm sorry if there's kids here, but uh, I have to actually have to work on my words here because the Chamber, <laughs> chamber of Commerce wants to show our movie on an ongoing basis in Taos, but they can't do it. <laughs> There's too many four-letter words in there that, uh, that won't work for the kids. But anyway, that's, uh, that's what I learned out of that whole political, that whole getting a law passed. Yeah, I got a law passed. I'll never do it again. Uh, yeah, I will. That's the way I'll go is inside and, 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 and attack like a virus does. Uh, but the, you, need, uh, you need individual strength. You need people to be empowered. You need people to know what to do. And that's kind of what we're doing. We've learned, you know, what to do. Uh, not that we know it all. Hell, I'm learning here right today. Uh, but um, 
You need people to know that they can do it in spite of the government. They don't have to fight the government. They can just put up a smoke screen for the government and let them, you know, stumble in their own stew and, and go on and do what you need to do. That's kind of what we're showing people to do. And uh, you're doing that. You're doing that as a network and as a, as a conference and as a group of people. I'm, I'm playing the individual game, but the individual game can work with your game. It's, uh, you know, so basically all of the people that, uh, you know, are, are sort of uh, understanding of the word logic are, are standing around, a, a, you know, a map of the world and figuring out all these different approaches that we can take to having a future. You know, it's, it's not much to ask. We just want a future. And uh, instead of fighting them, and, you know, I don't even blame them. I mean, they're, they're not even aware of, of what, what they're doing, like the chicken in the uh, water tray, you know. They think it's the right thing to do. Uh, so there, so the, what I'm getting at is if it's a war, and I do consider this a war, uh, you need fighters. You need, you know, the fighters that dart around in the sky and, and uh, shoot the bombers, and then you need the bombers, you know, and you need the battleships. And uh, it, it, so you need all kinds of things to do what we're doing. That's why I'm saying what I'm, I'll be talking about in the workshop and, and today is uh, not the only way. But we're, we are taking a strong individual approach to empower people to be able to encounter the earth and extract sustenance of life. And there's another big thing that I think comes in when you mention the word sustenance. Uh, and, and, uh, sustenance is the things you need to stay alive. You know, food, shelter, water. Uh, I guess we need energy, uh, comfortable shelter, and we have to do something with our garbage now that we've invented it. You know, people invented garbage. Uh, it didn't exist. But sewage, garbage. Uh, the, but the sustenance of life, the things that you need for you and your family to stay alive every day, this is, this is oversimplified, uh, but it's, it's possible. It should be separated from the economy. It should not be subject to the economy. When the economy goes bust, it shouldn't mean that people lose their sustenance. If, if if people can encounter the phenomena of the earth to get food, water, shelter, energy on their own, then the economy can go up and down and people can be selling computers or not selling computers or corporations can go bust or whatever, but people aren't going to lose sustenance of life. The, that's the way it should be. Um, so we are... We have, so we spent years, I mean, I've been doing this for 40 years, uh, and we spent years learning how to uh, individually uh, uh, encounter the phenomena of the planet to have sustenance of life. And then we got to this place where uh, it used to be really expensive to do all these new things. Well, now, after years and years, we've got it to the point where we have a carbon zero home on the market. Uh, we build it all over the world. Uh, in the developed countries especially for uh, the same price as uh, a conventional home. And we thought we had arrived, you know, we made it. A conventional home is too expensive. So we, we made it there and there's nothing there but more problems. Housing is too expensive. The sustenance of life for people is too expensive. It shouldn't, and so it, which led us to, it, it shouldn't be subject to the economy. And uh, so we've got a project now going where we're trying to separate it from the economy. It's called EVE, Earthship Village Ecologies. It's taking all of these uh, components or these attributes or these uh, qualities of an Earthship, a sustainable green home, and trying to make them available uh, in, a, in a way that doesn't really involve money that much. I mean, we were actually doing this uh, a decade or more ago and the government stopped us. Uh, so we fought for a while, and then we realized, uh, you know, uh, it, it, that's not the way. Uh, so now we sort of have the government on our side, but they don't really know what we're doing. Uh, <laughs> lying is a really a good way to you know, pursue some of these uh, things. Uh, so we, 